Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome back to Freddy Fisher Mover's Maze Madness. We're starting World 3 today, we're on level 11, and this is a pretty cool world. Quite literally, because we're going to the ice cavern. We better get swimming and collect all those kelp seeds! So this is a pretty sweet looking world. This also introduces us right off the bat to a new type of gate, the shell gates. So this one requires a sea star to open up. So now we can have purple sea urchin gates as well as shell gates. Uh oh. Gotta watch out for the blowfish, but because there are all these uh, cycles in the mazes, they're pretty easy to deal with. This one's also also. This one's also also only a one screen level, so it's pretty simple. So because we have a new type of gate now, that can add a lot more complexity to maps. So you could have purple sea urchins required to go one way, and then shell gates that, requ that require you to go a different way. It's pretty cool. So this level is basically just about navigating those blowfish. I'm praying they don't go over there. But I still have a little bit of bubble bath left from the last world, so I can use that in case of emergencies. You better get swimming and collect all those kelp Alright, let's get the worm first off. Go from here and grab the purple sea urchin. Yeah, so as you can see, we now have the purple sea urchin that opens the gate over there. And we need to open that gate in order to open the other gate. I just realized, if Freddy Fish is opening a bunch of gates, does that make it the water gate? Darn it. I pushed the wrong button. I pushed Z instead of control, which is shoot bubbles. That's okay. I'll leave this uh, kelp seed behind, grab the sea star, and open the sea star gate. Alright, so now there's a new type of shell gate. This is the sand dollar, which for the life of me, looks like a cookie. I'm sorry. And these shells here are the ones that spit water or cause currents to occur. No! Man. Worm duels do not last long. I always forget that. They only last for about a minute. Birthday cake, yes please. I feel like I should keep the mouse cursor off screen for the most part. I feel like it might be distracting otherwise. I'll do that. Or at least as much as I can. Hey, doofus. My bubble bath has got to be about to run out. Because these guys, they're, it's totally possible to navigate this level without bubble bath, but it just makes it a lot tougher. You've got to really watch out for the blowfish then. Okay. We better get swimming and collect all those kelp All right, so if memory serves, this level can be a bit tricky. If you want to get everything anyways. Oh, yep, that's right. So what you want to do is open this door, and you do not want to use this purple surgeon to open that purple surgeon gate. Because if you do, you get locked out of there, which means you get locked out of here and all the extra points. Well, that's at least what I like to think. You at least get locked out of these worms here, as well as the firecracker. And plus, now that we have the bubble, we can wreak havoc on these bullfish. So sometimes there will be two purple sea urchin gates and only one purple sea urchin. And that will never lock you out of getting kelp seeds, but that can lock you out of getting extra point stuff. Oh no. The pearls can bounce just about anywhere, and if they bounce through solid walls, that can be really annoying. So for example, this one, we have to go a really long way away in order to actually reach that pearl. And they can melt after a few seconds. So that's no fun. But sometimes they bounce in a place that's literally impossible for you to reach because, like, you need to go for different rooms in order to reach them. Alright, I forgot I forgot most of these ice cavern levels are just one screeners. So this will be a short video. Hope you guys don't mind. No, no, I don't mind. Go up here, open the sand dollar door. This also introduces us to the next shell door, the spiral door. So we get the spiral shell, and that'll open the door right below us. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. 
Especially with the blowfish coming in here. I'm gonna have to wait for the anglerfish. Oh, hang on. I'm almost out of bubble bath. That is not good. That is not good. So you can see this level is a lot more dangerous if you don't have bubble bath or the bubble from last level. But we're already on the last level of the ice cavern. This is a short world. We better get swimming and collect all those kelp. Starting with the next world, the levels are going to get longer. Because thus far, we've never seen anything beyond two screens. Levels can have up to five screens. And then the bonus room. It's a total of six rooms for you. Ooh, more bubble bath! I think I will collect that later. But if we go down here, you know what time it is. It's time for the bonus level. We got the crack down there. Magic Scepter will be somewhere in this room. And generally, if you're trying to find the Magic Scepter, try swimming into conspicuous looking spots, where it's like, well, why would they make, like, a dead end there? More often than that, that than not, that means the Magic Scepter is for there. You can also make the bubbles ricochet off walls, which is nice. Well, we gotta get the sea star anyways to get the shell and the last kelp seed. So, yeah, let's try that. You also can't have the trigger that spawns the magic stat, uh, scepter overlap with any other uh, object on screen. So you can't have, like, the magic scepter trigger and a shell overlap. You also can't have two kelp seeds overlap or a kelp seed and a shell overlap. Each square on the level is restricted to one object. Which is nice. Let's get this uh, lion's paw. At least that's the Animal Crossing word for it. Yeah. Oh, birthday cake, yes. That's why the dead end was there. For the birthday cake. Alright, well, the Magic Scepter trigger is going to be somewhere. Perhaps it's up here. Sure enough, and the scepter appears down here. That's our last kelp seed we have to get as well, so... Grab that, and the road to Narnia opens. I didn't trust that guy. Bonus room number three, baby. These guys also don't spawn randomly, like, they spawn in set locations, but whether, when they spawn is essentially random. They spawn every once in a while. So you can just camp their spawn locations, but that's generally not a good idea. Because, well, that makes you miss out on all these other great juicy points. I like the worms a lot. They stay around for the longest, but don't give you any less points. Well, I've got I've got you now, Mr. Duck. Also, unless I'm mistaken, yeah, you can't trap them in bubbles. Because they these guys are not technically enemies, they are actually like um, not sure what the word is for power-ups that give you points instead of powering you up. Oh, I thought for sure I would get a 1-up at 10,000 points. Guess not. Ooh, cotton candy. Yes, please. I don't know why cotton candy is apparently worth more than ice cream. Well, who are they even kidding? Cotton candy is not even that good. Shots fired. Alright, I'm gonna interpret that as I got everything. Wow, the world is already over. That's how short this world was. So if you want, you can just rip right through these levels really quickly. But yeah, that's it for the third episode of Freddy Fish and Luffy's Maze Madness. I guess this will be a shorter video series, which is a nice contrast to my Ace Attorney videos, which are at minimum like a half hour. So thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. I hope to tu you tune in next time. We're going to the next world, and that is where the levels get a lot longer. Hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.